special needs in nursing homes and um, uh, that type of thing. So that center is paying attention to the 30,000 foot level and we are paying attention to, uh, we are the boots on the ground to actually help and execute what is required for uh, assistance with either road closures or parking or volunteer to Red Cross or uh, getting specific getting specific items that might be needed within the shelters or working with the Red Cross. So this is a holistic perspective that we uh, are part of a much bigger operation. And our piece of it is, uh, like we said, electronic ATMs, electronic tracking network, and, uh, and shelter out from the Red Cross. So I, I hope you kind of get a feel for that. And you're welcome yeah. to walk around and get yeah. a close yeah. shot of the map and, and maybe talk to one of the people and, on the screen. And the other thing is, we're, we're actually at that point in time in this where we're, we're in the maintaining of everything. Everything, everybody's where they need to be. They've all moved from, because we had people for this exercise, they went from all over the state of Texas to locations in North Texas. And so we've got people spread out from North Texas to, to Austin. Like actual, actual, actual real in, in people. Okay. there Because this is our annual training as well. Right. Okay. So they're at these different camps in Texas for oh, their those training. Are, those are the three other camps. Those are the three other camps. Okay. Okay. Right. Now, getting... Okay, so some of that information you can So now that point, that, that process of getting them there can be a, a very hectic time period. So this, this quiet that you see now, this is probably the quietest it has been in the past 40 hours easily. I mean, there were, you're talking people have been putting in good 12 to 14 hour days for their for eight hour shifts, you know, just covering this room. And it has been very, uh, I don't want to say loud. It's this, like I said, this is unusually quiet, and, but there's been a lot more activity in this in the past couple of days. People going up back and forth, in and out, bringing information. Come on in coming on, uh, bringing information back and forth, phones ringing, calls, looking at information on this. I mean, very busy. This this is very misleading right now, but it can be a very, very busy place. And it's gonna get busy again tomorrow when everybody starts going home. So all the phone calls start again, so, you know, airman so-and-so's leaving or private so-and-so's leaving and they're on their way back to home and we're tracking all of our people as they move across the state to make sure that they get from point A to point B safely. And you track them with those wrist bands? No, now this point, because that's for the exercise, that's for the tracking of the clients. This goes back to the old school, picking up the phone and calling and saying, I've arrived safely at my home of record. Okay. Those wristbands are for uh, evacuating. I mean, because you can consider this because with the evacuees they may not have the communications or you know they, they may not have the, the type of things we're all moving back and forth across the state for our exercise we're calling on our cell phones or we're sending emails and there's information that's going back and forth so for a minute so we get, so what, what they have been doing since Wednesday is simulating that a hurricane is in the Gulf, and it's approaching the Gulf of Mexico, or approaching the coast, and the governor's calling out the State Guard, and that was, you know, that's from the start of the exercise, not the start of the exercise, but that's when we began the clock, and now we will move through, and then all of a sudden the hurricane will pass, and tomorrow morning we will do the tracking, simulated tracking, to get right. the evacuees back home. So the hurricane's on its way. The, the hurricane is on its way. Right. Right. It's right. hurricane landing. The hurricane has made landfall. Okay. Okay. It is. And the other thing, like I said, to remember is these are all volunteers. Right. Almost everybody in here has a regular day job. Mm -hmm. We're just here for this is our annual training, and most of the time people are, are doing their once a month drills just like you would see in the traditional uh, National Guard or Reserves. Okay. What you see on this screen here is this is a, what would be our console for our emergency tracking network, Texas ETN. This is what I referred to when I said you would ban somebody and scan them. And when I say somebody, one of the first questions is people immediately look to the right and say, I see registered pets. Are you actually tracking pets as well? Yes, because 
one of the things is, is people love their animals and you, you don't want to leave your animals behind. That in the past has actually prevented people from evacuating their homes because they couldn't take their pets. And then so what you get there is you get a larger loss of life because people won't evacuate without their animals. You get your first block here, you see 765 registered guests. This represents the number of clients that we would have at the shelters. These are how many people are banded and would be at the shelters. In 22 active vehicles, this would be a bus. The bus is going from the coast to wherever the shelter would be. We're tracking that at 44 active locations, 44 different shelters. And in this case, you know, as I said, it's an exercise, so it's a simulated thing, and the 44 different shelters are shelters at these three locations that we're actually training at, but this could very well be 44 different cities across Texas, and these cities could be a church, it could be a warehouse, it could be a military hangar at a base. Uh, I myself, I live in San Antonio. That's where I'm, I'm normally at. So we're at the headquarters area here. At one point in time, we used the old Levi Strauss plant during a hurricane evacuation because it was a large enough empty building and they needed the room. You will find that they will use just about anything as a shelter that they can. And then of course the pet list. We've got our pets. And in this, I can honestly say we have one real pet in here, and it's not a pet, it's a working dog. We have a person who is part of one of our ground search and rescue teams, and they have their search and rescue dog with them. Oh, okay. And they have the friends. So is, does the pet get one of those bands, too? Put a band right around the collar. Does, does, does it get the Barcode the vehicle, walk up to the vehicle, and it's actually to the point where the application is uh, available on our cell phones, so we're, we're providing that capability, that technical capability in the hands of the guardsmen where you know we aren't relying on pieces of paper having to track this. Paper can get lost really quick and trying to get that paper turned in to be submitted, whereas this is instant. You get that information, they're scanned, and it's in the system. Was this be kind of like a volunteer base situation? Um, for the active vehicles, can, if somebody has a big enough vehicle, like say for some reason something that's like a retired school bus, can they donate that bus to you guys to use in a real situation, or do you guys just go to like school districts? And you know, I don't know the answer to that question. I think generally speaking, you know, there'll be chartered buses or school buses or things like that. You know, because you, you really want to make sure that you have something that has that reliable fleet maintenance right. and things like that. And as much as people do want to volunteer and give things like that, you, you have to be very careful about that because you, you don't know has this thing properly maintained. And then you cause a bigger situation when you have a busload of 60 people that's been broken down somewhere. A lot of that, too, has been pre-planned mm. with the uh, Texas um, Emergency Emergency Management Department that's already been pre-planned where they can, what buses or school buses will be available in a particular area. That's all been done through the emergency management planning. Oh, okay. Yeah. That wouldn't necessarily be something yes. we could have any control over. Okay. That's true. All of, the, all of this thing is, there's the, there are very large operations plans, op plans, that cover these contingencies and these things are pre-positioned. These things are ready. They know you know, it's, it's an interesting thing because we have our guardsmen who may be on the coast, but you're really going to rely on your guardsmen on the other side of the state because these people also live in the area that's going to go there, and we know where we're going to go from one place to another and types of things that we're going to be using. And as, as, uh, as you've said there, is, uh, this is uh, already pre-planned out. Uh, so what are the yellow, the yellow squares on that? This is, this is an operation summary map. So now this is actually, you know, one of the key things in, uh, I may have failed to mention is, although this is having to do with an exercise right now, we also have a real world obligation in this room to track our people who are in the exercise. Okay. So what this is telling us is we know that we've got the locations that uh, they uh, briefed you about in the press release and such, Fort Walters, Camp Maxie, Camp Mabry, 
in Camp Swift outside of uh, Bastrop. And this is just gives us a, an, an ability to brief the commanding general or whomever when they come in here that I can look and say, yes, sir, we have 209 personnel at Mabry. We have 281 of them at Fort Walters, 160 at Camp Swift, 233 at Maxi, and I can tell him what units they come from as well. And as, uh, as Commander said there is we've got an Army component, an Air component, the Maritime component, medical component, an engineering detachment, and by looking at this I can tell the Commander where what units are where and how many personnel from each unit are there. Okay. So it's basically a large status map. Right. And so in these locations, like you said, these all have that, that actual number of people yes. working right now. This is real. This yeah. is this is our people who are there right now. And these are the same people that would show up to those locations if this, yes. was, if this was a real situation. Right now we are managing over 880 people for this exercise. Wow. But, but remember, too, uh, you know, in the event of a real emergency, some of the locations might be a school, high school gymnasium in Nacogdoches yes. or in Lufkin. Or, so for our training, we're using those locations. But there, there will likely be uh, a, a shelter, uh, shelter, again, depending on the severity of the storm, There'll be shelters inland and likely on an arc from San Antonio, Austin over to Lufkin. Okay, so it's not necessarily always. Right. Uh, Years ago, uh, during Hurricane Ike, I deployed up to North Texas to Canton, which is up in the North uh, Dallas area, if I remember correctly, to a church. Oh, okay. So the church offered the. the station there. At a church. Yeah. We have all over the state. They have identified structures where evacuees can go if they're coming from the coast and they're and they're being evacuated and they need shelter outside strike zone. And so, all over the state, they they already know if they are called to um, shelter people, they have those buildings already identified and those buildings can be you know church school uh, auditorium it can be any number of different kinds of building and they each know how many people they can shelter <coughs> in place there so we wouldn't put if it can shelter 50 people we're not going to put 300 there right so that that's all been pre-planned and that's the beauty of the whole system is um, we are getting prepared to move as we need to move and provide services to um, Texans who are, who are affected by some natural weather disaster, some wildfire, because we've evacuated people out of wild, wildfire zones. And uh, or or uh, if there's a tornado going through, we we go in and we provide shelters to those people. Just like in Canton, we had that really bad storm there. So we're we have that flexibility to be where we need to be to provide support to that local community. So it's it's uh, the camps we're using right now. Um, we picked those camps because it allowed us to put a large number of people there and they're each being trained on shelter ops. They're setting up shelters, they're doing the emergency tra tracking network, they're doing um, the web-based uh, information that you see in here. Um, so, and they're doing land navigation. So, um, we're using those camps as training grounds and they're training on the skills that they will need if, if we get deployed for some natural disaster or something like that. Okay. So I don't, it, is, can, it can be a little bit confusing at looking at that because those are all for our training we should, right okay. now. We, we should move to our bot. Okay. Sorry. You think you got what you need? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. 
wealth of information. All right. And, and as I said, the paperwork I gave you, press release, and has, the recruiting gives you a, a good of overview so, of what okay. um, the state guard is all about. Perfect. Okay. I appreciate it. Great. Thanks so much. Appreciate it.